Provost Park Pass. My name is Chris Provost, and today I'm gonna teach you everything you need to know about Genie Plus here at the Disneyland Resort. The Disneyland Resort. I'm gonna teach you every tip, trick, secret, everything you need to know to make your vacation when you come down here amazing, have an amazing experience. All right, let's get into it. Genie Plus. We are focusing today on Disneyland and Disneyland only. Let's talk about Genie Plus. What is it? How do you use it? Now, in order to understand Genie Plus, you have to understand these three things. Number one, there's Genie, then there's Genie Plus, and then individual lightning wings. And for today's video, we're not gonna be talking really very much about the Genie. We're mostly gonna be talking about Genie Plus. What is the Genie? The Genie is just a free thing on the app, on the My Disney Experience app. That allow, it'll kind of go out and plan your day, so it'll help you choose what you want to do. I've had hit or miss with it. Nah, I don't really use it. When you come to Disneyland, you don't really need it. What is Genie Plus? Genie Plus is something you pay for and it costs $20 a person. You pay for it and it allows you to skip lines at certain attractions. But you really have to know how to use it correctly to get your money's worth. And that's what we're gonna talk about. All right, so I do have to talk real quickly about individual lightning lanes. Those are a separate thing where you have to just purchase your ticket and go get those lines. It's not part of Genie Plus, be aware of that. That's for Rise of Resistance, it's also for web slingers, you don't need it, and it's also for cars. We're not gonna be talking about those things, but everything else we're gonna be talking about Genie Plus. All right, now let's get into Genie Plus. Genie Plus is this extra expense if you want it. It's $20 a person. At the time of this video, it's $20 a person. So everybody in your family has to have it. You can't just buy it for one person family and expect everybody to use that benefit. It does not work like that. So there's four of you, you all four of you are going to need the Genie Plus. When you go to multiple attractions, there's multiple attractions here in Disneyland that has this, uh, the Genie Plus line. If you have a wait time, you go right to the front of that particular attraction and you don't have to wait. You, you skip the line basically. So it's a really good benefit if you want to, if you're willing to or want to pay for that extra little bonus of having Genie Plus. Let me show you what it looks like when they have a Genie Plus line. Okay, so here's the Matterhorn, and over this side, this is the normal standby entrance, and then right over there, we got the Lightning Lane, right there. That's what we're talking about. That's Genie Plus. It says Lightning Lane, but really what we're talking about is a Genie Plus Lane. Here's another example. This is It's a Small World. If you look right there, you got the standby entrance, and then right there, you got your Lightning Lane. So that's how you know which one. Lightning Lane, That when it says Lightning Lane, it just means Genie Plus. Now, Lightning Lane does it take you all the way to the front of the line. Be aware of that. It's like the fast pass lane. You know how you skip certain sections of the line? So don't get your like, think I'm gonna go walk all the way right to the front. You're gonna skip a certain section, get pretty close to the front, but it's not right to the front. Oh my gosh, Geppetto, it looks so great. This Moana, Mary Poppins. Okay, so Wendy just stuck on by, like, like literally, she like, look at she is, like right there, just walking through the crowd. Wendy for Peter Pan, right there. What is going on? So if you don't have if you don't have the Genie Plus, then you're gonna be using the standby line. Just be aware that's what it means, standby line. No Genie Plus, you're just gonna use the standby line. And when you see like the wait time, like when you're waiting in line, you, like, if you look at the app, it says like it's small world, wait time, 55 minutes. They're talking about the standby line, not the Genie Plus line or the lightning lane is what they call it. Uh, that's a totally different time wait. It's usually only about 10 minutes. But the standby line is what you see when it shows how long the, lo the wait time is. Now, not every attraction has a lightning lane. For example, I'm entering into Fantasyland, Storybook Land, no lightning lane. Alice in Wonderland, no lightning lane. Dumbo, for example, Dumbo right over there, no lightning lane. King Arthur's Car Carousel, no lightning lane on that one. Peter Pan, no lightning lane. Snow White, no lightning lane. Just be aware not every attraction has a lightning lane. Now, here's a list of all the different attractions that do have a lightning lane. Big Thunder Mountain Railroad, Indiana Jones, Space Mountain, Autopia, Buzz Lightyear, Star Tours, Matterhorn, Splash Mountain, The Haunted Mansion, Smuggler's Run, It's a Small World, Roger Rabbit's Cartoon Skin. Hey, I just really quickly wanted to say this. I wanted to say thank you. Thank you for watching this video. It means a lot. I mean, you'll be spending your time doing other things. The fact that you're spending your time with me, that means a lot to me. And the next thing I wanted to just tell you this is I want you to know how awesome you are. Sometimes in this world, we get beat down. You know, we get we get all these troubles and these things happen and, and we have like disappointments or we have heartache or we have things that just, it makes it hard sometimes. And we tie those, those bad experiences to our self-worth and then we think, well, maybe I'm not worthy of the success or maybe I, I deserve, no, that's not true. That is, that's a misnomer and that's a lie. You are special, you are amazing, and you're priceless. And I'm talking to you, I mean it, to you. And I want you to know that you're, you're wonderful. And so if you're having a bad time, 
you're having a bad day, a bad week or bad year, I want you to know that you have a friend here in me, Chris Provost, and my wife Amanda, that we are your friends here in Provost Park Pass and that we support you. I want you to know that we love everybody across the board, all of you, every single one of you, doesn't matter. We love every one of you. Be kind to our people. All right, I just wanted to say that. Okay, all right, let's continue on. I think this, this is pretty cool though, right? Do you guys like this? I like this. I just think it's cool. So anyways, let's continue on with the video. Now that we kind of have the basics of what is a Genie Plus and all that, let's get into how to use it effectively so you can get the most, you know, the, the, like, stretch your dollar the furthest, okay? This is gonna be one of the things that most people will tell you wrong. A lot of people are like, when you talk about rope dropping, when you rope drop, that means you are coming straight to the park and right as the park opens and you are in the park when it opens. So for example, the park opens at 8 a.m. You're here about 7.15, it lets you into Main Street. And then when at eight o'clock at the end of Main Street, you run and go ride rides. For that first hour, you don't really want to use your Genie Plus. What? I'll explain why. You have an hour, the way Genie Plus works, I'm gonna use Space Mountain as my example throughout this video. So let's say I grab my uh, Lightning Lane through Genie Plus for Space Mountain. I have one hour to use it from when it's issued to me. So I go in, I got my Genie Plus app and it says Space Mountain available at 8.15 in the morning. If I select that, then I have to use it between 8.15 and 9.15. I have one hour. There's a one hour window there. That's why I really don't recommend the rope drop strategy of using Genie Plus right at the very beginning. So I was walking and talking, I was getting distracted and my thoughts weren't really coherent. So I found a little spot where I could stand and talk for a second, which I think also has a nice background. You come in the park, you have to be inside the park in order to start using Genie Plus. So if, if I'm not in the park, I can't get on the Genie Plus and start making my reservations until my ticket has been scanned and gone in the gate. That's rule number one. So let's talk about rope jumping, the rope dropping. If I get here and I rope drop at 8 a.m. and I go in and I select Space Mountain at 8.15, all right? But then I'm like, okay, there's no line for Jungle Cruise. So I run over Jungle Cruise and then I run over to Indiana Jones because there's no line there. Then I hit a Pirates of Caribbean because there's no line. Woo Big Thunder. And I do all these attractions real fast that first hour because there's no line. Then guess what? I go back to look at the time and now it's like 9.20 in the morning. That hour is expired and I've lost my ticket. I've lost my Genie Plus for, for Space Mountain. Why is that important to know? Because you can only get one ticket for an attraction on the Genie Plus. So once you've, once you've done like selected Space Mountain, I can't go back and select Space Mountain again. And then again, I get to do it one time. So if I miss that at the very beginning, then I've lost my one lightning lane for Space Mountain. So what I suggest here at Disneyland, keep in mind, this is all Disneyland. Walt Disney World's a whole nother, that's a totally different scenario. We'll talk about that in a different video. But here at Disneyland, you're gonna come and rope drop all those rides as much as you want if you're here early. And then, then you're going to start using your Genie Plus. Now, if you show up a little bit late, you don't get here till like nine in the morning, then boom, immediately start using the Genie Plus. Okay, so you understand that? The rope drop, I wouldn't use it until you're after you're done and getting all those rides with no attraction, then start using the Genie Plus. All right, so now let's talk about wait times. How does the Genie Plus work with wait times? When you select a ticket, so let's say I select Space Mountain, I get here at 8 a.m. and I select Space Mountain and my time is at 9 a.m. I cannot select any more rides on the Genie Plus until I've used my current selection of Space Mountain at 9 a.m. But this is where everybody gets confused and this is where you might need a little piece of paper to write this down. There are some things you should be aware of. Let's say I get here and it's 9 in the morning and I want to ride Space Mountain. And I look on Genie Plus and the only times I see available, the first time I see available is at noon, noon. That's three hours away. And I select that, I grab that, I'm like, boom, I grab that Space Mountain for noon. What it will, the Genie Plus then will start counting down for two hours. At the end of two hours, then I could select another lightning lane, even though I haven't used my Space Mountain one yet. Does that make sense? The two hour. So if I started, at, if I grab it at nine, then at 11, I could go grab another light, uh, lightning lane for the Genie Plus, even though I haven't used my Space Mountain. But the Genie Plus app is not gonna tell, it won't remind you, it won't say you can go select another one. You have to set a little reminder on your phone. So if you are doing that two hour gap, put a little reminder on your phone to have an alarm go off in two hours and then go select another uh, lightning lane. Got it? Okay. A lot of people make this mistake and I just don't want you to do that, is that people get here, for example, uh, Space Mountain is now themed as Hyperspace Mountain, so it's very popular. 
So people will get on the Genie Plus app and all of a sudden they'll see it's not available until 4.30 in the afternoon. They'll select it even though it's like nine in the morning. And then they think that they can't use their Genie Plus until 4.30 until they've used it. So they don't use it and they waste all that time. Every two hours, you can be grabbing a new pass. Does that make sense? But now here's what gets even a little trickier. Oh look, petrified tree. Ah. Petrified tree back to the rivers of America. Okay, so let's talk about this. Let's say that I grab my uh, Space Mountain at for 8.30 in the morning. It's 8 in the morning, I grab it for 8.30 in the morning. The second I've used my lightning lane, I can then grab another lightning lane. I don't have to wait the two hours. So you either have to wait the two hours or use your lightning lane. Then once you've used your lightning lane, you can go select another one. Does that make sense? To be clear, one more time, just because people get confused by this. It's eight in the morning, I select my lightning lane for 8.30 for uh, Space Mountain. Once I ride it at 8.30, the second I get off, I can go select another lightning lane. Or, it's eight in the morning, I select the lightning lane for Space Mountain, it's not till noon, then at 10 o'clock, after I wait two hours, I can select another lightning lane, even though I haven't used my noon lightning lane. Okay, we've covered that part enough, let's move on to the next topic. Let's talk about park hopping. Let's like, how does it work your park hopping? Um, pretend, that I am in uh, Disney California Adventure. This, you know what, why, why are we pretending? This is a video, let's make it happen. Let's go, to, let's go right now. Okay, and now look, we are now in Disney California Adventure. Here's the thing, let's say you start at the park here at Disney California Adventure, and you really want to ride, let's say like Space Mountain. That's your ride that you're dying to go on, and you have G Plus. Well, you know you can't park hop until one o'clock in the afternoon. So if it's like nine o'clock in the morning while you're here at Disney California Adventure, I could get on my Genie Plus and look and see what the next available time for Space Mountain is. The app is so smart that I'll realize, oh, you're in DCA, but you're trying to make a reservation at Disneyland, so it won't make my reservation until after one o'clock, after I can park up. So if it's at nine in the morning, it'll look at all the different times after one o'clock that Space Mountain is available. Now, keep in mind, it's nine in the morning here, and I make that reservation at Disneyland until after one o'clock, then I'm gonna to have to set my alarm clock or alarm go off every two hours to keep getting more reservations while I'm still here at Disney California Adventure. All right, let's go back over to Disneyland. All right, and now we are back in Disneyland. Let's talk about the price of the Genie Plus. It is $20 a person, a person. So it could be, oh, my God! <laughs> Look, there it goes. What is happening? It's $20 a person. So it could be a little bit pricey. I'm going to tell you how to do this. The best way to do this is to buy it when you buy your package. So let's say you're going to Getaway Today. You're going to get the best prices, so you should obviously go to Getaway Today. Go to Getaway Today, and then when you buy your, your hotel or your tickets, tell them you want to include the Genie Plus, and they will then attach it to your ticket so you have it. It makes it really easy. Now, I'm going to be completely 100% honest with you, so I just believe in transparency. It's not any cheaper. It's the same price. But here's the advantage of it, is that when they released the Max Pass, it was $10, and then it went up to $15, and the price kept going up. I think that this, the Genie Plus, is going to get more expensive. If you buy it, and it's already attached to your ticket, if they increase the prices, they won't increase the prices because you already bought it. So you're always gonna know you're gonna get the lowest prices in case they increase the price. And I think that they will increase the price because it's so popular, it's crazy. Now a lot of people are like, well, I'm only gonna buy it for one day. If I'm coming for three days, I'm only gonna buy it one day. And I've heard a lot of people say that. That's fine. The question I get asked the most is, well then which day should I use it? Should I use it on the first day, the second day, or the third day? That's a really hard question to answer. I'm gonna tell you why. Number one, if you use it on the first day, you're gonna love it and you're gonna make it awesome. And then you're gonna say this, right? Man, I wish we should do this on every day. And uh, you're gonna be like, end up probably buying it for every day. Just keep a heads up. Or if you end up using it on the very last day, then what ends up happening is that people end up saying, oh, I wish we would have used it the entire trip. I'm going to say this. This is just my two cents. If you are traveling from out of town and you're coming to Disneyland and this is your family vacation, it's worth it to get the Genie Plus. Get it, get the Genie Plus and use it so that way for every day of your trip. You, you won't regret it because it just makes it so nice. You'll wish you had. Now, if you're only coming out here for one day and you're local, then you don't need the Genie Plus because you know, you're just gonna do what you normally do. But if you're traveling from Wisconsin, family of four, you're gonna wanna use this. Let's talk Rider Swap. You might be asking yourself, what the heck is Rider Swap? 
Rider swap is when you go ride an attraction and you have a little one who might be too small. Or, hey guys, how's it going? Back to rider swap. So rider swap is when you have a little one who maybe doesn't want to ride a ride because maybe they're scared or maybe they're just too small. So you wait, so I go ride the ride, then Amanda be waiting for miles. And then at the end, we could switch, get a little rider swap, and then Amanda, she would go ride the ride, and then I would wait with miles. It's called rider swap. It's for allowing, it's basically somebody has to wait in the line to in order for the other person to swap back and forth. Now, there was some misinformation and people thought they found a loophole in the system. So what they were doing is they're buying Genie Plus just for one person and then they're going in and saying, hey, I, I, I got a ride or swap and they're letting people go. It doesn't work anymore, guys. Uh-uh-uh. I'll tell you why. Now, in order to do rider swap with Genie Plus, both people have to have Genie Plus, and they will check that. So for a while there, they had it where like if only one person bought the Genie Plus, then I could rider swap and switch back and forth. But Dizzy found that loophole, and they plugged that loophole. So if I get a if I get a Genie Plus Lightning Lane, and I ride the ride, then I come back and says, "Hey, I got one for my my spouse, Amanda." They're gonna say, "Okay, let's see Amanda's uh, Genie Plus," and they're gonna put the ticket on her Genie Plus. If she doesn't have it then she can't do the rider swap. Ugh. So that doesn't work. That's a lot of misinformation. The other thing is though, really you don't really need rider swap because what would happen is Amanda and I would both have Genie Plus. We both select uh, Space Mountain at 11 o'clock. I would ride her first and then come back 10 minutes later, take Miles and she would go ride it. And then that's really what you do. So there's not really a loophole for rider swapping. Just be aware, there's bad information about that. Now, I'm gonna tell you about the Holy Grail, the unicorn. What you wish happens when you have a G Plus. This is a secret that most people do not know. Very few people know this. But luckily, you're subscribed to Pearl's Park Fest, so you get all these cool secrets. If you ever have G Plus, and you go on and you see that attraction is down, let's say Space Mountain is down for whatever reason, then what you wanna do is you immediately wanna to try to select that attraction and get your wait time. Because if your wait time expires and the ride's not back up, then guess what? They will then give you a ticket to allow you to go ride anything that you want to go ride except for Rise, Cars, and Web Slingers and Peter Pan. Other than that, you can go on a whole bunch of different attractions even if they don't have the lightning lane. For example, Alice in Wonderland. What? I see the Space Mountain's down. I quickly go select it and then it'll come back up and hopefully it doesn't, I mean, hopefully it doesn't come back up, which sounds weird. And then my time expires, I'm going to get that ticket to go back and to use any attraction that I want. Then immediately what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go select another, select Space Mountain again, because it's so close and I haven't used my original uh, first try. And just how we keep getting those tickets of ride whatever you wanna ride. Yeah, not a lot of people know that. That's an amazing secret. So, ha, ha. so if you ever see a ride close, that's what you're doing. Before we continue on the video, guys, I'm here at the canoes. I gotta, I gotta harass the, the canoe guys because I love them so much. And yeah, I'll tell you this right now, the canoes does not, have a Genie Plus Lightning Lane. I don't know why it should, because it's the best attraction ever, but whatever. Wyatt! Yeah. Why did Dopey buy a box of crayons? Because Snow White told him to draw the curtains. <laughs> Terrible. I appreciate it. <laughs> why doesn't the canoes have the Lightning Lane? I can't figure that out. I've been trying to get him to install them too. You guys are just so efficient at loading him, you don't need it. No. <laughs> Too good. Too good. Too good. So now we're gonna talk about what not to do with the Genie Plus. Because this is what happens, a lot of times people do this and they make this mistake, then they regret it and they have a bad experience. And I don't want people to have a bad experience at Disney, I want you to have a really good experience. So what happens is people come to Disney and then they're having a good day, they're having fun, it's like, ah, this is great. And then about three fourths of the day, all of a sudden it starts getting a little crowded and they think to themselves, well, I'm gonna buy Genie Plus right now, I'm gonna start using it. There are a limited amount of spaces. So if you jump in like maybe like at five o'clock and buy your Genie Plus at five o'clock, a lot of those spots, you go try to get a reservation for like Space Run, it might not be, or it might be completely gone. Hello, hi! So what ends up happening is they end up buying the uh, Genie Plus late in the afternoon and then they go to get a reservation, but the first, things they get are like way late at night. Then people are like, why did I do this? If you're gonna use the Genie Plus, you wanna use it for the full day. That's really like a thing you have to understand that rule. Right after you do your rope drop in that first hour of just getting on all the rides, then you start using your Genie Plus right then and there and use it for the full day. Don't uh, do that, make that mistake of just buying it late in the day, trying to think you're gonna bypass all lines because those lightning lanes are probably already full by that point. Good to know. I'm working on it. I can't quite figure it out. There's gotta be a joke in there about Ray breaking a bone and she gets on a X-ray wing. I, I, it's close. I'm, I feel like I'm very close to coming up with an X-ray <laughs> wing joke. 
If you can help me come up with that, put that down in the comments down below. Like, we gotta come up with an X-ray wing joke. I mean, we got Ray, right? You got the X-wing. It just seems like you got X-ray. It's like, it's gonna write itself. I know that some of these are gonna be super creative. We're gonna create a joke right here together. Let's do it. Now I'm gonna show you exactly how to use this app so that way you can see how the app is used. Let's do it. You have to download the app when you come to Disneyland. It helps you with all your reservations and all those mobile ordering, things like that. Genie Plus is included as part of that app. So you don't have to have a separate app for Genie Plus. It's already included in the Disneyland app. When you log on to the app, there's a little button there that says, I want to Genie Plus. When you click on that, they're gonna send you a little uh, confirmation to your email, give you a code, you get on that code, then you pay for it. Once you pay for it, then it's gonna let you select which particular attractions you would like to go on Lightning Lane for. You're getting as many Lightning Lanes as you can so you get your money's worth with the app. And the way that you get those Lightning Lanes is you go on the app and you click on where it says My Day. Once you select My Day, you scroll down to find the attraction that you want. At that point, you select the time and you go do that attraction. And if it's time to use your Lightning Lane, there's gonna be a little button there that says Redeem. You click Redeem, it gives you your barcode, and you're gonna scan your barcode in to get into your attraction. All right, so here's some other, just little things, little nuggets to know about the Genie Plus. These are the most popular attractions. So if you're thinking about getting these attractions, they're always gonna have the longest wait line. The first one is at Disney California Adventure. It's gonna be Guardians of the Galaxy. That's always gonna be the one that's gonna have the longest uh, wait time. So you try to grab it, it's gonna be in the afternoon probably. That's fine, but remember we talked about it, you grab it and you just wait your two hours and you can be able to grab another ticket. And as far as California goes, it's almost always Indiana Jones, except right now they're having Hyperspace Mountain and that's a special event that only goes since the 4th of July. And so right now, Hyperspace Mountain is the most popular attraction. Uh, but once that is gone, it's gonna go back to Indiana Jones. But even though those are the most popular attractions, you're still going to be able to get on them. No problem with the G+. Plus. Here's another little thing that most people don't talk about the G+. Plus. You get the photo pass. You know how at the end of the ride, some rides take photos? If you have a Genie Plus, those photos are included. And any character photos that you get with a photographer, those photos are also included. It's a nice little perk. So yeah, think about that. Hey, if you found this video valuable and it's gonna help you on your Disney trip, which I hope that it does, because I want everybody to have a good time, would you hit that like button? That's really your way of saying thank you to me for doing this video, just hit that like button. And if you're really feeling generous, hit that subscribe button. It doesn't cost anything, you hit the subscribe button. Then there's a little bell notification. If you have that bell notification turned on, Every time we do a video, you'll get notified and you can watch that video if you choose to. That's why people are saying, turn the bell notification on because if you subscribe, you don't have it on, you won't get notified. But it's really up to you. Just if you like our videos, I'd like to, if you hit the like button. You are amazing. Have a fantastic day and week, month, year, and know that you're awesome. Thanks for watching Pro's Podcast. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.